As you can see, I made just a tiny bit of progress on the pizza car, and then I got a phone call. Hey guys, and welcome back. I am Sam Crack. This right here is the pizza car, and you guys are absolutely amazing. I thank you so much for all of your positive outreach. I've even received like a ton of inquiries to buy the pizza car, and I talked to the lead designer of this car when it was just a project car and a concept in its early, early stages. It was a really awesome conversation. He told me about why things were designed a certain way, how certain things actually worked in the car. Hopefully it's something that we can show you in the near future. But right now, this video is about the new project sports car that was finally delivered. I was in the middle of actually working on the pizza car and I got the call that the sports car was being delivered, so I had to kind of drop what I was doing and go and retrieve it. Now, I apologize for not uploading as frequently the last few days. The sports car, just getting it parked uh, where it is right now took up way too much time. So what I want to do right now is just hop in the car, take you guys along with me. I'm going to take you over and show you the new Project Sports Car. Now before we hit the road, I want to give you guys something really quick. Right here I have an Aoki dash camera. It's got an LCD screen right here. This camera head swivels on the back. It's really neat. It's one of the more full featured dash cameras I used. It retails for right around 70 bucks. Really awesome product, but as always, I like to give this sort of stuff to my viewers. So if you want to win this Aoki dash cam, just do me a favor, like this video, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and comment down below. Specifically, whether you want to see more pizza car or whether you want to see more of the sports car that I'm about to go show you. I've been getting a lot of emails, especially from a lot of the new subscribers. They went ahead, they went on Copart's website, they signed up and they said, how do I go ahead and bid on this car? It says I have to have some sort of license. Are you a dealer? What is your trick? And the trick is e-repairables. It's a broker that allows me to buy cars like this Project Sports car you guys are about to see. I don't hold any licenses or have registered business where I buy these cars and sell them or anything like this. Like I've told you guys, I only do it for fun, but e-repairables is how I am able to do so. So if you want to learn more about buying a project car, or maybe you need parts for another one of your cars, and you want to get it at auction, definitely check out the link below for e-repairables. Now in a moment, you're going to see the project sports car as I received it. I haven't started working on it. I want you guys to see exactly what it looks like before we get to work on it. And let's just say that it gave us a good amount of trouble just arriving here. I'll get into that a little bit in a moment, but we're almost there. We're gonna check it out in just a second. And here it is, the 2011 Corvette Grand Sport, or like two thirds of a 2011 Corvette Grand Sport. You check out the front here, you could see that we've got some uh, fenders missing, the bumper missing, there's some stuff down there missing, radiator, condenser, fan, intake. But the nice thing is the body parts, they're all over here. These body parts are super expensive, especially you buy these wide body ones. So here are the fenders, the bumper. And the interesting thing about this car is they're all in great shape. They're not cracked, they're not damaged, and even the fiberglass pieces like this, are intact pretty much. I mean, we got a little missing piece here, which by the way, in the trunk, all those missing pieces of fiberglass are there. Now that I'll have to replace this or not, I'm not entirely sure yet. This car only has 8,000 original miles and it's disgusting looking. Look at how dirty and dusty. It looks like a barn find. Now I'm gonna come around to the passenger side here. The interesting thing is the accident report said that the accident happened in this corner. And this corner actually is uh, pretty good on this car. It's the other corner that is problematic. Now, as you guys saw on the pizza car, how imperative it is for your front end uh, frame rails not to be bent. Otherwise, you tend to just use these cars as parts cars. If you look in here, you can kind of see the rail runs all the way back. It's darn straight. I mean, it's pretty much perfect. If we look at the front crash bar here, this won't even have to be replaced. It's straight. This frame rail is straight. Honestly, this is like what I saw right here. What you're looking at right here, this is what the picture looked like. And I was looking here along the sides because between the fiberglass right here and the aluminum that the car is made out of, this stuff would just 
bend real easily in an accident. You can see it's perfectly straight. That was what was so exciting about bidding on this car and uh, winning it. But the one thing that the auction really didn't mention was the fact that, well, it's got undercarriage damage and suspension damage. So let's hop on the creeper here, like my real high-end creeper here. I'm gonna get underneath the car. Of course, I've got it supported by a uh, jack and the jack stand. So let me show you exactly what is going on under there. Before we go ahead and get underneath the car, I'm gonna show you exactly what's damaged. I have to stop, we wanna rewind a little bit, and I gotta tell you about the car arriving. So like I said earlier, I was in the middle of working on the pizza car, I got a call from the actual truck driver, the guy that had the car on his trailer, and he said he was very close. I went to meet him, and he was not at the exact address I had given him, he was off on one of the side streets. Now this is something that you generally have to deal with, these big semis can't fit in the neighborhoods, so what they do is they go onto the closest major street and they'll unload the car sometimes in a median uh, luckily this was on a side street so while there was some traffic uh, he just parked it right there and started unloading it but before we got the car off the trailer they let me know that the keys were inside the car and the doors were locked and well the battery's dead and of course on a Corvette everything's electronic there's only one way on the C6 Corvette that I know of to get into a car with a dead battery and the doors are locked. On the key is a physical key that you pop out of the fob. And you go into the trunk, you put it in the bottom, you unlatch it, and there's an emergency release. Well, again, everything is locked. So I started doing research online. I saw that you could try and pop the taillight out and reach the battery that's in the trunk. I saw that you can hook up a jumper box to the starter. None of this stuff seemed to work. We had very little space. It just so happens that the window was cracked just like a fraction of an inch. And so luckily enough, I had found a metal rod that had an L shape on the bottom. We were able to shimmy it through the front window, put it on the floor, and then pop the door open with the emergency door release. And that was just step one of getting this car into the garage. Then, number two, as you see right here, the transporters were very gracious enough to leave it in the middle of the street for me. Now, immediately when they left it there, I said, okay, it's a Corvette, it's 3,000 pounds. It's not like my Mercedes that weighs almost 5,000 pounds. Well, that was a mistake because what you're about to see underneath the car Part of the suspension is broken and dragging on the ground, and that was creating resistance for us. We then tried to turn to MacGyver. There's a local business with a forklift. He tried to help us out. I found an old, crappy skateboard. Don't worry, this was not a good quality skateboard. It had plastic trucks and stuff. I tried to use it as a wheel dolly, and that didn't work. I have, I have wheel dollies, of course, and I just didn't have them with me. So what ended up happening is within several hours of pushing, pulling, moving, just a few feet here and there, I ran out to the local store. I bought more wheel dollies. We assembled them really quick. Then the guy with the forklift showed back up. We tied it to the forklift and he dragged us close enough to the garage, which we were able to go ahead and push it in. Wow. I th apparently the wheels are stray right now. Look at how turn the steering wheel is in this car. I had to get that quick story and what took me a couple minutes to explain to you consumed almost an entire day. Especially when you're buying damaged cars and they don't roll. Like I told you, I always bring with me a battery jumper. I bring with me a tire inflator. This is stuff you gotta have. It makes your life a little bit easier. In this case, this Corvette wouldn't start. I don't really wanna start it because the oil lines, the oil cooler are off and you don't want to be running an LS engine dry. So anyway, let's get back to the video. Let's get underneath the Corvette and you're gonna see exactly what's wrong with it. So just telling you guys how awesome the front end is here, and it is actually really good, but the first thing I notice when I get underneath, if you can see right here, it's indented just a little bit. Right, I'm trying to do this with two hands, right here it's got an indentation in it. And that right there is likely why this car was totaled out. This is a great example of a car. If you can fix, we're gonna to get to that damage in a moment, but if you can fix this sort of suspension work, and this is a Corvette, so it's gonna be a little bit more difficult than your standard car, but if you can fix this sort of work, it will end up saving a ton of money and you're gonna get a great project. If we look at this as the other side frame rail here, it's completely straight. So my guess is this is what totaled the car because everything right here even though it's going to be somewhat of a hassle, is repairable. 
So we look and see our, our lower control arm, which is this piece right here. That has been completely uh, cracked off. Our next major issue is right here. This is the subframe. That is a separate piece from the car. It can be completely taken out and replaced. Unlike this frame, which is a major headache if you gotta go and start cutting frame rails out. So we're gonna have to replace this entire subframe. Of course, we're gonna replace this control arm right here. And if you look past that, right there is uh, that, that area that looks all shredded. That's our leaf spring, and that's also broken. Of course, when we look up and we see that there's a major hole missing here, we're gonna have to replace all the different stuff that's missing here, the radiator, the fan. If there's any oil coolers, which it looks like there's an oil cooler line or two over there, we're gonna have to replace whatever's just missing because that definitely didn't come with the car. I'm sure the Corvette guys out there noticed that our air intake was missing. Here it is right here. It looks complete. It doesn't look like it's broken. Uh, this right here is our MAF, our mass airflow sensor. Those parts are typically very expensive. So this is a part that is really awesome that uh, it's still here and it's still intact. These are some under panels, mounting bolts and things that they took apart. They obviously didn't include any of the coolers, radiators. I'm guessing some of those might have actually cracked. Who knows what happened? Now, if you've been following me on Instagram, I had dropped a lot of hints, dropped a few photos. I think you guys had pretty much figured it out. I hope you enjoyed the tour around the C6 Corvette Grand Sport, but I need to hear from you guys. Are you more interested in seeing the pizza car get done first, or are you more interested in seeing this Corvette being built? Please let me know in the comment section below. Of course, we're gonna get both of them done. I hope to get both of them done in a reasonable amount of time, but obviously we've started on the pizza car and we're gonna get to work on this as soon as we can. Hopefully I'll be showing you guys a little bit of both over the coming weeks and months, but I definitely want to hear from you guys so I know what you want me to keep the main focus as. Now I have to give a huge thanks to Bob at TAC Auto Transport. This is the first time I've used TAC Transport and not only was their price like way super competitive compared to any other broker I've used in the past, uh, Bob was just honest and he got this car picked up in Houston where all the flood cars are right now. It's very, very difficult to get a truck out of Houston to bring you a car. So Bob, thanks again. If you're interested in transporting a car pretty much anywhere in the world, definitely check out TAC Transport. I've linked their website in the description box below. I've also uh, linked uh, their phone number if you wanna give them a call. Guys, if you're excited about seeing this Grand Sport come back to life and be completely rebuilt, definitely hit that like button. If you have any questions for me, as always, everything you need to do to contact me is in the description box below. As I'm doing these rebuilds and as I'm shooting this video, I do snap some photos and upload them to Instagram. So if you wanna see what is going on in a more instant fashion, definitely follow me there. Guys, thanks a lot for watching and I will catch you very soon.